The SV Boney 205, is it worth the extra cost? Let's find out. Hello, welcome to my channel, Small Optics. My name is Jason. Now, Retovix, uh, I think that's how you pronounce it, Retovix, I'll flash it up on the screen, has uh, very kindly sent me another camera. Uh, the, in this case, or this time, should I say, the SV Boney 205. Now, this is the uh, big brother, big sister, whatever you want to look at it, of the um, SV Boney 105, which also Retovix sent me. I'll leave a link to uh, w w where you can get this uh, in the description. Now, there's a, uh, about a £40 difference in these two cameras uh, between the 105 and the 205, and is it worth the extra £40? Well, well, or whatever your country's equivalent is. Well, first of all, it, let's go into the specs, all right? Um, now, I have jotted a few down here like that. I will put a, the specs sheet up, but there is, a, there is a, I think I've counted five differences between the 105 and the 205. Uh, of course, the price, that's one of them. Uh, we've got a £40 difference. So what are you actually getting for that? Well, the 105 is a two megapixel camera, okay? Not a lot, I know. Where this one is a eight middle, uh, eight megapixel camera is uh, on the uh, 205. Uh, they've changed the sensor in the 20 as well, the uh, the sensor model. In this one, they've got one called a OV2710. Okay, and in this one, it's an it's they've changed it to a Sony uh, Sony IMX179. Okay. Uh, the other big difference is, um, well, oh yeah, the uh, pixel size is slightly different. Now, I'll flash that up on screen, okay? There's the difference in the two of those, and uh, the image sensor, okay? So, there's the difference. Now, you'll maybe noticing that I've been a little bit vague about all this, about the <laughs> because it's all jargon to me. I mean, I'm still totally new to this astrophotography behaviour. And what matters to me is, is the jargon, you know, that's all well and good. But is there a difference? Can you actually see a difference between the two? Well, yeah, you can. I mean, to me, it was obvious as soon as I... Um, uh, I plugged the uh, camera in and what I mean by that is on the, um, <clears throat> when you I mean the way you just in case you don't know how to use these if you just these are actually um, classed as a digital eyepiece I think the, the digital eyepiece camera I think they list them as um, and ba so basically you just use it like an eyepiece you would insert this into your uh, focuser and then plug it into a PC, okay, and then run it through uh, software such as SharpCap. Um, oh, also, you may have noticed there's no nose cones on these two cameras. Um, I, I, I took the nose cones off to get some uh, close-ups of the image sensor, which I'll probably flash up now, and I forgot to put them back on, and for the life of me, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know where I put them. Uh, but all a nose cone is, it's something similar to this, okay, and that would just screw onto there and you can see now how, how that would work that would just go into your uh, focuser now oh now the usbs are different on these i've got these at the back of me here on the 105 um in fact i'll do us some i'll bring the camera in a little bit closer so you can see yeah on the 105 these standard usbs it's your standard white uh, showing there. Uh, and it does have two. I still haven't worked out why the 105 has these two um, USB uh, things. They don't seem to make any difference whether you're running off one or two. As were the... Uh, behind me, excuse me a minute. The 205 has these USB 3s. Uh, the blue ones. Now, I believe that's they're just faster data or something like that. But like I say, does this make a difference? Um, <laughs> overall difference, that's what's important to me. Uh, and as you can see, I, they look identical. This is the uh, SV Boney uh, 105, this is the 205. And the only t way you can tell the difference is by the uh, USB ports there, see, one's white and one's uh, blue. Uh, 
Apart from that, they're identical, identical weight and uh, everything. What I meant by, uh, as I kept rudely interrupting myself, about the image quality, the overall image quality, when you first plug the camera in and you've got the image on the screen, what I noticed with the planets, uh, with the 105, I wasn't happy with the picture at all. It was almost a little bit pixelated. Uh, I mean, I tried all kind of settings, you know, like I say, I'm totally new to sharp color. I keep saying I can't, I know I can't keep using that excuse that I'm totally new. But to be honest with you, I still haven't had much practice with either camera because the weather, it's, it's been probably the worst British summer I can remember for ages for, for astronomy. It's just been really bad. So I still not had much practice with these. But if I put this image up now, you can see this is this is done with the 105, okay, of Jupiter. And overall, it's not too bad. Like I say, I only had a small window of opportunity with that. But if you look, look at this zoomed in picture. This is how it appears on the screen, okay? And you can see this, these, these sort of pixelations. Now, with the moon, you don't see that. And I'm sure that, I mean, for both cameras, the moon's going to look fantastic. But with planets, now... Have a look at this picture. Uh, this is with the 205 of Jupiter. Okay. Now, apart from the obvious, why is it in black and white, Jay? <laughs> well, to be honest with you, I don't know. Um, I processed it. Uh, processed it. it. <laughs> I processed it in um, in color. Um, and I did have to see a little bit of colour on the screen, but for some reason it came out black and white. Anyway, like I say, I'm still you uh, learning. But if we, if I put that other image up, I compare the two together and take away the colour of that one also, just to show you. Um, you can see there's a lot more detail in the 205. Uh, the 205 did a far better job of the planets. Um, now. I am obviously going to be doing a lot more on these two cameras, especially the 205. As soon as it gets something like weather-wise, I can get out and do a proper video of me actually using it and fumbling around with all the, all the software like I do. Um, but is it worth the extra money? Well, to be honest with you, I would say that the 105, now that I've tried it on the planets, is more of a lunar um camera okay you're gonna get better shots of the moon than you are the planets now well this is in my short experience so far where the 205 is going to be i've done the wrong way around it doesn't really matter it look exactly the same this is the 205 this is the 105 uh but uh but the, the uh, 205 as you can see there's just so much more detail that you can get through now this must be something to do with all the jargon I've uh, just listed off earlier, but um, yeah, I, I mean, I've not tested this on the moon yet, uh, the 205, um, I've got them wrong again, aren't I? This is the 205, <laughs> this, is the, this is identical, I've got to turn them this way so I can see the blue, <laughs> not that it really matters which one I'm holding up, um, but yeah, there was a definite noticeable difference in, in the two. I could just see it straight away. I thought, oh, that's better. Now, I was just about to get Saturn, and yeah, you guessed it. The clouds come rolling in. Um, so I've, I still want to have a good go at Saturn, because that's the most photogenic one of them all, isn't it? Um, I just want to touch up on something. Uh, I just, just mentioned something. If you're thinking about getting into this uh, simple form of astrophotography, because this, even though this is like still about in the £70 mark, um, the 205, £70, £80 you're going to be paying for it, we're still in beginner cameras okay you're still in that beginner camera uh, category where you're not going to be burning loads of money and uh, like i say because a lot of people get into astrophotography and it can sometimes be a hobby killer for them um, because it's not easy honest guys it really isn't easy especially on basic um, equipment like i'm using now if you've got something like i've got a very simple mount like this um, it's, it's a struggle, it really is. And one thing I first noticed, what I couldn't understand, was um, 
I've got the, I'm, I'm, oh, another thing, make sure that your finder scope is precisely in, you are going to rely on your finder scope so much on basic equipment like this, and it's got to be spot on in tune with your telescope, okay, because uh, that was so frustrating, Um, I got it spot on in the finder scope, and I just couldn't get anything on the screen, and it's like, what's going on, I finished up actually finding, the way I, I found it easier to find the targets, is to actually take the camera out, and do the, you know, we've got no eyepiece whatsoever, I sighted it on the finder, and then I could actually see it shining off the mirrors, if you get what I mean, and then place the camera back in, and then I, I got it. So that's something to be aware of. You are going to be doing a lot of that um, if you haven't got some kind of uh, go-to or anything like that. Um, yeah, and, and it, it, I just, it is incredibly frustrating. Um, it is, can I say it's rewarding? Well, you know, as you can see what I've put up at the minute, they're not really pictures I'm uh, very proud of putting up on the internet. Uh, but after all, it is just a test. But like I say, first test, definitely there's a noticeable difference between the two cameras. And if you can afford it, I would go for the 205 over the 105. Because even with the 205, you're not spending an, an earth-shattering amount of money. And uh, like I say, if you, you find that you don't like it uh, after you get into it, and I've got to be honest, I'm gonna st I still am going to need some tempting to uh, do a lot of astrophotography. I mean, like I say, it's the weather has been so bad, and we had a good couple of hours, I think it was Saturday night, uh, a good couple of hours, and... I just spent all that time looking at a computer screen, you know, and there were so many other things to be looking, you know, fiddling around with settings, trying to just actually get the target in the field of view. Oh, uh, yeah, so if you've got any tips about that, how to get the target in the field of view, let me know, any experienced astrophotographers. Uh, but, yeah... Um, yeah, I would recommend the 205. I think uh, I think it's definitely um, worth it over the 105. Like I say, specs and jargon can just mean specs and jargon. It's it's what's what counts is the visual, isn't it? I mean, you know, does it look right? Uh, can you tell the difference? And I could straight away. Um, so I was a little bit disappointed with the 105 when I first put the 105 on the planet. I was just like, well, why is it, you know, this pixelating? And you could actually see this pixels. And I think that's just because of the low resolution camera it is. Um, and it's definitely one for the moon. Uh, yeah, stick to the 105 for Luna. And you're going to get away with uh, the uh, 205 for Luna and planets. Another thing to be aware of as well, if you are getting into uh, astrophotography, is focus. Uh, <laughs> What you'll find is, even on something like uh, this, I mean, this is an EQ mount, not the best mount in the world, EQ2 mount, should I say. Um, it's not the best mount in the world, it's not the worst mount in the world. Uh, but as soon as you're going to be touching that focuser, it is <laughs> it's a, a nightmare. Because you've got to remember, you're not looking through the eyepiece, you're looking at a computer screen. And if your eyes are as bad as mine, <laughs> I'll get in these days. I need two pairs of glasses, so like... I'm you know, one for up close, one for a little bit further away. So I'm like, you know, oh, absolute nightmare. And, and, and like I say, the image is constantly moving. So if you can, if you've got a little bit of spare money, get yourself an electronic focuser. Uh, this is something I'm going to be pur purchasing, uh, definitely. Um, I think they're an absolute must with, the, with basic equipment like this. Something that you can just, without touching the telescope, is going to be a godsend. Uh, another thing I would highly recommend is some kind of focusing mask. Now you can buy these or like me, make one. <laughs> this is you maybe that's a, a very f uh, famous Cabris colour because this is a quality quality streets uh, tub lid uh, that I've just made. This just hooks onto the uh, telescope. Yeah, I just thought, well, I could make one of those. It'd be quicker to make one than wait for one to arrive off online. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but they're cheap enough to buy. Get yourself a focusing mask. Um, you know, it's just I think it's absolutely essential if you are going to be doing astrophotography but like i say folks i will be doing a lot more on the uh, on this uh, 205 well on both cameras really i want to do a proper shootout with them both 
um, and we'll get some lunar images so stay tuned for that well that's about it for another video guys thank you so much for watching don't forget to hit that like button if you uh, like the video because that's the one that really counts and a big thank you again to Retovitz link in the description of where to get this 205 camera in the meantime guys take good care of yourselves and I will see you on the next one bye for now